This week in aviation history, the North American Valkyrie takes its last flight. February 4th, 1969. A Mach 3 capable bomber that still looks modern even today and gave the Soviets nightmares. The XP-70 took to the skies one last time, just five years after its first flight and 60 years ago this week. The idea behind the Valkyrie was to make it fly so fast and so high that interceptors could never catch it. However, advancements in Soviet surface-to-air missiles put this high-flying strategy into doubt. As a result, only three Valkyries were ever built and only two ever flew. The last flying example was tail number 62-0001, which flew its Finney flight from Edwards Air Force Base, California to its final destination at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. This journey marked the end of an era, with NASA research test pilot Fitzhugh L. Fulton Jr., a retired USAF Lieutenant Colonel, along with Lieutenant Colonel Emil Strumthrall of the U.S. Air Force, at the helm of the Valkyrie's final flight crew. Upon touching down at Wright-Patterson, Fulton ceremoniously closed out the logbook of the Valkyrie, which contained the record of the XB-70A's remarkable exploits, and entrusted it to the curator of the National Museum of the United States Air Force. A fitting resting place for a piece of aviation history and where it remains to this day. The XP-70 Valkyrie was more than just an aircraft. It was a testament to innovation and engineering prowess. Taking to the skies for the first time on September 21, 1964, or just over 60 years after the Wright brothers' first flight, this Mach 3 Plus prototype strategic bomber and high-speed, high-altitude research plane completed a total of 83 flights, accumulating an impressive 160 hours and 16 minutes of flight time. Valkyrie serial number 62-0001 was the first of a trio of prototype Mach 3 Plus strategic bombers. Unfortunately, the third prototype designated the XB-70B remained incomplete. The Valkyrie's design pushed the boundaries of technology, leading to the development of specialized materials and even manufacturing techniques. With its large delta wing, forward canard, and two vertical fins, the aircraft was simply a marvel of engineering. What set it apart was the ability to lower the outer 20 feet of each wing to angles of 25 or even 65 degrees during high-speed flight. This not only enhanced directional stability, but also contributed to compression lift. Think of it as riding a shockwave, which supported up to 35% of the aircraft's weight during flight. It's hard to overstate how big the XP-70 Valkyrie is. This thing was huge, measuring 185 feet and 10 inches in length, with a wingspan of 105 feet and an overall height of 30 feet 9 inches. The delta wing had a zero degree angle of incidence and a zero degree dihedral. Although the second XV-70A produced had a five degree dihedral, likely making it a little bit more easy to fly. The wing had a 58 degree sweep back. With a total wing area of 6,297 square feet, this aircraft was a true behemoth. Its empty weight stood at 231,215 pounds, while its maximum takeoff weight reached an astounding 521,056 pounds. That's right, a max of half a million pounds at takeoff. The Valkyrie was so advanced that almost everything about the bomber was custom made. Powering the XB-70A were six General Electric YJ-93 GE-3 turbojet engines. Remarkable pieces of engineering in their own right. These after-burning single-shaft axial flow turbojets featured an 11-stage compressor section and a two-stage turbine. They each delivered a normal power rating of 17,700 pounds of thrust or 19,900 pounds for military operations. Max thrust for each engine was 28,000 pounds. Even the engines were big. They measured just over 236 inches in length, just over 54 inches in diameter, and weighed 5,220 pounds each. Because of the power output of these engines, one of the biggest problems the Valkyrie had to deal with was heat buildup. At the speeds it was intended to fly, the aircraft's skin could reach an average temperature of 450 degrees Fahrenheit, 
The leading edges could get even hotter, seeing temperatures of 630 degrees Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, the engine compartments would get even hotter still, with the temperatures rising up to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. To counteract these incredibly hot temperatures, North American engineers came up with an ingenious solution. Sandwiches and bees. By using two thin sheets of stainless steel that were sandwiched or brazed to opposite faces of a honeycomb-shaped foil core. To cool the bomber even further, the fuel was pumped through heat exchangers as they made their way to the engines. This is incredible engineering design for today, let alone 60 years ago. In fact, this bomber was so advanced that many thought it would be the last manned bomber ever built. In terms of performance, the XP-70A Valkyrie lived up to its reputation. It achieved a maximum speed of Mach 3.1, equivalent to 1,787 knots or 2,056 miles per hour or 3,309 kilometers per hour. To put that number in perspective, that's 100 football fields per second. This incredible speed was reached while cruising at an altitude of 73,000 feet. Its mission maximum speed was an impressive 1,700 knots at 79,000 feet. And aside from going very fast in a straight line, this bomber could climb. In fact, its maximum demonstrated climb rate was 33,000 feet per minute while reaching a ceiling of 79,000 feet. In other words, it could get to this ridiculous max altitude in just over two minutes. However, the Valkyrie was thirsty. Having a maximum fuel capacity of 43,646 gallons of JP-5 or specialized JP-6 jet fuel. The bomber's fuel load was distributed across 11 tanks in the fuselage and wings. With all this gas, the Valkyrie had an impressive range of 2,969 nautical miles. That's equivalent to 3,417 statute miles or 5,499 kilometers. Tragically, the second Valkyrie, serial number 62-0207, met a catastrophic fate in a mid-air collision with a Lockheed F-104 Starfighter, which was flown by NASA Chief Research Test Pilot Joseph A. Walker on June 8, 1966. Sadly, both Walker and the XP-70's co-pilot, Major Carl S. Cross of the U.S. Air Force, lost their lives in the tragic accident. Today, XP-70A Valkyrie serial number 62-0001 stands as a revered relic of aviation history, finding its rightful place in the collection of the National Museum of the United States Air Force. A silent testament to the daring dreams and unparalleled engineering of its time. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and keep checking back each week for a look back in time. You can also subscribe to my free weekly newsletter, which gives you a quick topic on what's going on in the world of military aviation, a look back in history, and a high quality aviation photo I've taken that you can use however you like. Link below or visit hangerflyingwithtog.com. See you next week, and now you know. Pilot Photog dot com.